Ikash. Um, I don't like this. I just, I, there, there's a lot of this, a lot about this I'm not a huge fan of. Now we'll take a look at what this can do in terms of price. I'm going to just find my thought process on why I don't think this, sh this in theory should do much. Um, because, yeah, it's to do, it, look, fundamentally it's a payment option. I just think that, I'm going to explain all my, my perspective on this. I don't think payment solutions are the way forward within crypto. Uh, before I get into any of that though, guys, if you're new to the channel, um, these are the first 26 coins that I did videos about on the channel. In the videos, and these were all coins I was buying, and in the videos I showed up when I was doing that, and you can see what the prices were of all these coins when I recorded and uh, released my videos, and you can see the uh, prices these coins managed to reach in under a year and a half, and then what your profit would have been if you'd have thrown $100 into each one when I released the videos about them, holding for a year and a half and then selling them. And if you'd have done that, your profit from those investments would have been over 123 grand in under a year and a half, which is pretty good. Now, I sold all of these. Since I did, uh, I've been buying, and since the market crashed, I've been buying up new cryptos, and I continue to do that. Anytime I find a coin that I think can 40x, 50x, 100x, I get in on it. And what I will do is I will jump onto my site, and I will tell the members all about the coin. And I'll tell them what the coin is, what kinds of profits I think it can have and what percentage of my money I'm putting in and they can copy along. This literally removes thousands of hours of work for all the members. They don't have to start learning about new technologies. They don't have to learn about emerging trends, chart patterns, any of that. Don't have to start reading white papers. I do all of that. That's how I find the coins I do. Uh, so they can just sit back, copy along to the, my portfolio, make the exact same profits I do and all those thousands of hours saved can be better spent on friends and family and everything else. Now, if that sounds good to you, go to copymycrypto.com now. There's a link in the website, uh, sorry, in the description. On the website, you'll see what the members have earned since being there, what I've said in the past, and what ended up happening. Uh, everything on there is public record. You can verify it by going on the old videos on this channel. And if you like what you see, guys, you should join, and I'll see you there. Right, eCash. So firstly, this used to be known as Bitcoin Cash ABC. Um, it rebranded to eCash and they did uh, re-denominated and they made this into a uh, million times the, the ratio of Bitcoin Cash. So since that's happened and since the re-denomination, obviously now there's 19.5 uh, trillion tokens. Now, <coughs> look, this was a rebranded ver this is a rebranded version like i said of bitcoin cash abc bitcoin cash abc itself is a fork of bitcoin and bitcoin cash uh, it calls itself a cryptocurrency that's designed to be used as electronic cash um now they aim to be literally a means of transaction for goods and services now the coin had their rebrand in 2021 um <coughs> and Ultimately, look, um, this is a an understandable attempt, an understandable concept that they're trying to to run th to to like push forward. You know, they're scaling. They're looking at trying to create some serious improvements on Bitcoin itself, scaling transaction throughput from hundred uh, transactions per second to more than five million. Um, that is a, an insanely aspirational goal. No one's come close to that ever in blockchain tech. Um, and if they were to do that, that, that actually becomes very, very interesting because fundamentally, um, <clears throat> that would make eCash one of the most ideal uh, blockchains for development because that level of throughput it would mean you would want DeFi building upon there, you would want gaming, you would want everything building upon there because it could literally handle every single transaction across the network without issue. <coughs> it's just not happened yet. Now, it's led by developer Amori uh, Sechet, who was the lead developer of Bitcoin Cash uh, and forked that blockchain to establish Bitcoin Cash ABC, which is now obviously eCash. Um, so, 
Uh, he explained that reduction of decimals would help with the adoption of the coin. No other money has eight decimals. Why should crypto? Cryptocurrencies with a lower unit price also enjoy higher bull market appreciation because the eCash team is incentivized by both tech and price improvement. This improvement was a no-brainer. Technically, he is right. Like we have seen those coins that have stupidly high supplies uh, end up having really positive price action. You know, look at Safe Moon as an example last bull cycle. Um, the problem for me here is it's just it doesn't make sense as a concept. So look, big pay button is here. So that's making eCash payments simple and easy. That's a new development. So with pay button, accepting and doing commerce with eCash online just got more convenient. It's a free open source way to accept crypto on the web. Uh, it makes it easy for everyone to accept crypto assets like eCash online by adding a button to the website. Last year, GNC funded the pay button team to develop pay button for eCash. Um, so who can use pay buttons? Pretty much anyone. Now, the problem is, is again, you're looking at this as a concept for, um, for who the hell is going to like as a, as a payment solution, right? As a payment solution. Um, so who's going to take this? Who's going to take this? It actually boils down to the biggest um, issue, right? You've got to, like, if this is your goal, Firstly, look, you've got a goal of getting 5 million transactions per second. <clears throat> At the moment, um, you know, you, like to, to be able to do that, you know, you've got, you've actually got to show that you've done it. Uh, they're not, they're not close. They've not done that yet. Um, then, um, then you've got to get a, at like companies to accept this uh, and here's here's my issue with, with 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 all of this kind of stuff right you are a fluctuating asset <clears throat> you're not one of the biggest companies and businesses are not going to accept a fluctuating asset like this they're simply not they may very very well accept bitcoin they may very very well accept ethereum they will probably accept stable coins. What they will not do is accept a lesser known brand that is a cryptocurrency that is a fluctuating asset. We can see from the high that it hit after the rebrand, you know, it was more than 10 times higher than what it is now. Imagine if you're a brand, if you're a business that took payments in eCash here and you never dissolved them, you're now worth like the, every every payment you took you sold a computer for you know a thousand dollars worth of e-cash that thousand dollars is now worth 100 bucks that computer you sold at an enormous loss and here's the thing is that a cryptocurrency's problem that that necessarily a business isn't going to know to liquidate the cryptos that they're getting paid in no but it is a crypto's problem to explain to businesses that guess what we're a fluctuating asset so you do need to take you do need to convert that i just cannot see it <clears throat> i cannot see a scenario where businesses are going to accept anything beyond ethereum bitcoin possibly xrp and stellar um but they would be if they landed cbdc's um or stable coins it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense from a business perspective. It doesn't hell? It doesn't even make sense from an individual's perspective, really. Yes, if you are an individual and you're going, look, mate, you owe me a hundred quid, so send me that in e-cash. Fair enough, right? But even then, <coughs> in all likelihood, if you forget that or you don't even know how, like, there's a few barriers here. So people need to understand how, tech, how blockchain tech works. They need to understand how cryptocurrencies work. They need to understand how to trade cryptocurrencies. They need to know how to convert cryptocurrencies. They also need to understand, to some degree, market cycles. You're asking, uh, you're asking businesses and individuals to overcome huge barriers to entry to accept a payment in this form. If I ask my mates all around, and I've got a bunch of mates that are in crypto and I've got a bunch of mates that aren't, 
if I ask them across the board, hey man, I owe you, let's say in a scenario I owe them 100 quid, and I go, right, can I pay you in e-cash? Almost all of them will say no. There might be one or two individuals that will go, yeah, sure. Because they know crypto and they also know how to liquidate, like they know how to convert it, you know, they can trade it on Binance or whatever into something that they want. Because this is not something that they want. I've not heard anyone, um, or very few people talking about e-cash. <clears throat> so I just think the barrier to entry for the, it as a concept is just too damn big. It's the same principle as why, like, I'm not interested in Nano or Dash right now. But, you know, in 2016, 2017, I was very interested in those. And they ended up being highly profitable for me. But that was because we were in a different scenario. We didn't have the evolution of stable coins. We didn't have the, the growth and the development, like we only really Bitcoin was around. Ethereum had grown and hit a quite a nice high in that 2017-18 cycle, but we didn't have stable coins. And we saw some cryptos really rocketing. Dash was like a top five crypto. It's nowhere close to that anymore. And it won't be again. So pay, as a payment solution, crypto doesn't work right now. Maybe in a decade, it works. But as of right now, businesses will not accept crypto across the board. Some businesses will, but it, again, it will only be Bitcoin or it will only be Ethereum or it will only be stablecoins. And possibly some will accept XRP. Maybe Stellar. But that's it. And I think that's really unlikely as well. So what can eCash hit? Well, the founder made a very valid point. High uh, supplies tend to lead to good price appreciation. However, I'm not convinced we're going to see this do much. Because, again, I think the payment narrative is not an exciting one. It's not an interesting one. This will probably run back up. It might, it might run back up to, say, you know, about one this sort of 1.5 level where a lot of the volume was around November, September, September, October, November. You know, we saw this in December, we saw this 1.5 level. It's a fair level. That's about 6x from where it is. That would still put it at a massive market cap. This market cap would be over, you know, would be basically $3 billion. But given that I just don't think anyone's going to accept this as a payment, I think $3 billion is too high. I think, honestly, half a billion is too high. But... That's my perspective. I just can't see the payment narrative working. But what do you guys think? Like, and, and that's what it boils down to. Do you, because if everyone buys into it, if I'm in the minority and everyone else buys into it, it will do very, very well. I just don't see it personally. You're a cryptocurrency holder, if you're watching this video. What do you think? If you run a business, would you accept an asset that's got high risk of fluctuating? If you know friends and family that have their own business, do you think they'd accept a crypto payment that isn't Bitcoin or Ethereum? Let me know in the comments down below. And subscribe to the channel, guys. You don't want to miss this stuff. Uh, and look, <coughs> if you want to remove the work from your crypto investing, if you want to make the same profits I do, except do literally no work, that is what CopyMyCrypto.com is. It's where I dive into the markets every day. I find coins that are winners and I get in on them. And when I do, I jump onto my website and I tell my members all about them. I'll tell them what the coin is that I'm buying, that I'm getting in on, uh, what kinds of profits I think that coin can have, what percentage of my money I'm putting in, and they can copy along. That means they don't have to read white papers. That means they don't have to learn about new tech. That means they don't have to understand trends or hell, even learn about, you know, chart patterns. They save thousands of hours of time researching that are required to be successful in this market. And all that spare time can be spent on the things that they love. But in while doing nothing, they can make the exact same profits I do. On the site, you'll see what the profits have been from the members. You'll see what I've said in the past, whether that was talking about why Phantom was going to 100x when literally there isn't a crypto YouTuber on the planet that was talking about it. 
whether it was me telling everyone to get out of a DeFi protocol that was inevitably going to fail, and it did, and lost half a billion dollars. It's all public record. So go through the site, read it, verify it yourself, and if you like what you see, guys, you should join. And that's it from me. Take care. Bye-bye.